Hey, welcome back once again, all you SecPlus preppers. My name is Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo Security Plus questions of the day. Each and every day, I come at you with two brand new questions to help you as you continue to study for the Security Plus exam. Let's get right to it. Our first question today is, which of the following, given that list that you're gonna see right over there, are not things that should typically be included in an end user security awareness training program? Go ahead and look at those options. Click on pause if you need to. When you're ready, click on play and we can break it all down. Now, remember we're looking for the best answers here. What are the things that you typically would want your end users to be smart about? And remember, one of the keys with end users is you want them to be smart enough to, so that they can comply with policy and know what the red flags are when bad things are occurring. But you don't need them to be overly educated about uh, stuff that's going on in the IT world because one, it's not their job. Two, they probably don't care. And three, uh, for a lot of them, it would probably go right over their heads anyway. So uh, we want to keep it as simple as possible so that they can comply with the policy and the security requirements in the organization. So to that end, telling them about hashing isn't really going to be something that's helpful for them. So we should leave discussions about hashing and digital signatures and all that kind of stuff out. Now, I'm not saying that there's not a time and a place when users might need some education about it, particularly as it relates to digital signatures with email, but getting into the gory details of what you know, hashes are and hash message authentication code and digital signatures and all that stuff, uh, too much, too much for the average user. Another item that's on this list that users really don't need to be bothered by is the concepts of behind memory management. How the memory manager works on a system, does a user really care? Does a user really need to know? Are they gonna be able to participate in security by having more information about how the memory manager works? No, they're not. So it's not something that we would need to include in a uh, end user security awareness training program. So leave out the hashing, given this list, leave out the hashing, leave out the memory management, all the other stuff is absolutely fair game and should be stuff that users get um, well and truly trained on uh, so that they can be good end users. Hey, what's the title of your favorite book? If you could be a superhero, which superhero would you be? Those are examples of what? Those are your answer choices. Think about it. Click on pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play. These are examples of social engineering questions. Uh, no, not unless somebody knew these questions in advance. Um, if that was the case, then maybe, but Let's look at the other answer choice to see if there's something a little bit better for this question. Uh, biometric authentication? No. Uh, you have to use your brain to answer them, but that's the extent of biometrics that's involved with it. So no, these do not fall into the world of biometrics. Is it multi-factor authentication? No. If you want to argue about that, you can say, well, you might have to know a password and then also know the answers to these questions. Problem with that little nugget is that's two things that you know, and particularly as it relates to an exam, that's not the way the multi-factor authentication works. Multi-factor authentication is when you use two or more mechanisms of authentication, um, meaning two different types of authentication. Knowing a password and knowing an answer to one of these questions is not two different types of things. That's two different knows. I know this and I know this. Uh, so that's not multi-factor, particularly when it comes to an exam. They are cognitive passwords, yes. Who knows who my favorite superhero is? Come on, put it in the comments. Do you know what my favorite book is? you know the title of my favorite book? Come on, tell me. Okay, I'm waiting to hear about it. CAPTCHA, CAPTCHA is not the right answer. CAPTCHA is what every single person on this planet, or at least a healthy portion of people on this planet who've been on the internet, um, have seen when you go to a website and you want to log in or enter in some values, they have you go in and do something like you know, um, you know, read those almost impossible to read numbers in the little image that's there. I'm all about trying to prove that you're not a robot uh, or a bot going in and cruising through this website. Uh, there's a variety of different forms of capture that exist these days, but all of them involve making it difficult for a human to be able to, or excuse me, for a, a bot to be able to figure out what's in that image and read it, whereas a human can go in and sort of infer that, oh, that looks like a six and that looks like a G, or which of these pictures all have street signs in them, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, is, is all what CAPTCHA is all about, making sure that it's a human actually using this page, not a robot. And then a uh, birthday attack is the last answer choice. No, not a birthday attack. Birthday attack has to deal with some junk with hashing, uh, and this is nowhere near that. So this is very much a cognitive password scenario. All right, today's questions are pretty straightforward. Hope you liked them. If you did, click on like. If you want to get them every single day and know when I post them up, click on subscribe. I'll appreciate that. Until then, I will see you tomorrow.